Right, so um, a lot of people have been asking about the Tinergy remote um, along with the Frysky module. Or this Tinergy 9X from Hobby City um, as a test model um, to play with the Frysky stuff. And there you can see my Frysky 4 channel receivers mounted to my Yak, um, which we'll be using for the test now. Um, there's one thing to bear in mind, and that is the module. Um, hasn't got a bit of reinforcement down, keeping the circuit board down on this side. It's only got a piece of reinforcement down on that side. So what happens if the pins, like in Winston's Eternity, aren't perfectly lined up, they tend to hit the circuit board, and the whole circuit board tends to twist at an angle and sit like this inside the remote, which stops the module from um, bedding in properly. Um, I've made Frysky aware of this, and they're obviously addressing it in the next issue. And I think um, Bruce, um, or XJet, has also made them aware of it. So they are they are addressing that in the next release of the modules. Um, as long as you know about it, it's not an issue. Um, and I'll show you how to fix it if it does happen to you. Uh, as for the transmitter, um, I did a quick and dirty mod. Note the tape receipt. Not, not the best idea, this tape battery. Um, I was flying, the battery fell out. And uh, yeah, the yak went up and, up and upwards and onwards, and I, and I fell safe, which I didn't set. Um, luckily enough, I managed to. Yak slow enough that I managed to pick the battery and put it in, plug it in, get the yak down. But don't, don't do this. Not a fail-safe way of doing it. Um, I'm essentially waiting for my new battery to arrive. Though, of course, what it comes with though is this little battery adapter, with little pen lights. Um, I just basically snipped it off and put a light point into it. Um, I'm not really a fan of these, of these things. So I think if you drop the remote, or you have a. Sh Thing, these batteries can come loose and yeah, you end up with the same problem, no, no transmitter and relying on your failsafe. Um, one thing to bear in mind is that when you do turn on the transmitter, it's very important that all these switches are actually in the up, sort of downward position, um, because if one of them is off, you'll turn it on and you'll get a switch error. And that can be highly annoying. Okay, So essentially, make sure all the switches are up and down, like this, no worries. Take your Transmitter in your module. Now, this is the fun part. Take it and make sure that you line it up very carefully and don't rock it side to side. Rather, just try and get these pins in straight. Um, get in place and should click in nicely. You'll notice though, if you don't have it clicked in correctly, this button here will be very hard to push. It'll almost be impossible to push in this bind button, the range test button, um, and your module won't click in on both sides. If that's happened, then your board has moved sideways. The easiest way to fix it up is these little two screws here. And there's little two screws. Lift this whole back top piece off. Be very careful the aerial wire and you'll see that the whole board's moved sideways. Just to line the board up, slot it in nicely onto the pins, put it back in, put this cover back on and put the screws back in and your module will be firmly placed in basically firm secure and ready to use. Um, other tip with notice, when flying and binding, don't go do this with your aerial, point it straight at the receiver, that's really bad. Um, rather keep your aerial at an angle or in the downward position like this. Okay. Now, turn on the transmitter. See it turns on, all lovely. That all works nicely. Now I'll give you an example how quick this binds up. We'll plug in the battery. One, two, three. Yeah, before I can get my hands to the, get my hands to the thing that had bound up and ready to go. Nice thing about the transmitter, or about the Frysco stuff, it's all got bind buttons on the receivers, so all you essentially need to do is push the buttons. Under a range check, push that button down, and you essentially reduce your range as well, your power output. And that's how you do the range. See, button's not green, and that's doing a range check. Put it back, you have full power. Right, pull it down, go, that should go, oops, I'm going to hold it, <laughs> hold it, there you go, green. Essentially that green light means it's in limited power mode, you can do walk away and do your range check, you see, don't jump the motor on, I'm just push it to remove it from playing. It's a very clear thing, not like the blind buttons in the spectrum, so you have to hold and hold and hold, and yeah. yeah, definite color change. And that's essentially the Tenergy. Um, 